I just left the theater watching No Hard Feelings, starring Jennifer Lawrence and Andrew Feldman. And um, it was definitely an experience that I would like to talk about here on YouTube because uh, I had originally wanted to go see Asteroid City and AMC said, hey, no, you can't do that. And when I got to the movie theater to see if they even had any showtimes available, uh, they did, but they were all sold out for whatever reason. So I said, hey. I need to go see a movie today. Uh, it's Thursday. Uh, I need to see my weekly movie. I have to. I have to get my fix. And so I thought, fine, fine. I'll go and see this movie. Th this Jennifer Lawrence comical movie, right at R. It's like it's not really up my alley. It's it's a it's a romance movie, and uh, I just I was not happy. I wasn't happy going into this movie. I was very disappointed. Um, but yeah, uh, after watching the movie, I felt like I had a lot of revelations uh, walking out of this movie because I personally resonated a lot with uh, Andrew's character, Percy. Uh, that character was literally me in high school. And meanwhile, Jennifer Lawrence's character, Maddie, was everything I embodied during my years in college. So <laughs> to a little knowledge of my own, I walked into this movie and I was just really compelled by these two characters. I, I jumped on board with them. I enjoyed them. They had some very great character progressions. And the script was actually just, it was a lot of fun. It did feel like one of those Netflix rom-coms, but the message actually kind of hits here. And when I say actually kind of, I mean, it it really does hit. This movie honestly kind of feels like it was it was made for me. Like this literally felt like, uh, like, oh, hey, I feel kind of bad that you can't go see Asteroid City today. So we're giving you like your own personalized experience. And so that's kind of what this movie felt like for me, which makes me feel very, very biased while talking about it. We're gonna be talking spoilers, of course, about this film. Uh, I say, of course, because I, I highly doubt a chunk of my YouTube audience is even going to go and see this movie. So I feel like it's a pretty safe bet to discuss this R-rated movie openly on the internet, project my feelings, and tell you guys overall what I thought about it. Because, I mean, I, I've already pretty much gushed about it. I, I enjoyed this movie. I actually really liked it. Um, there, were, there were a lot of filmmaking elements, um, such as the camera work, I just couldn't really get on board with. I did like uh, how a lot of it was actually shot. In, in a wider format. They used a wider lens for a lot of the shots in this movie. And so with that, you could see a lot of the action, a lot of the physical comedy take place. And you, it being a rated R movie, you you, you did see quite a lot of, of, of skin. Yeah, it did stand out a little bit, made me feel a little bit uncomfortable, but I it, it kind of really embodied that aspect of Percy's character for me and brought me back to my roots as a kid in high school. I've just, I vibed a lot with these characters, both Percy and Jennifer Lawrence's character, Maddie. But in terms of their characters, both of them, especially Maddie, it was just very interesting seeing that change and then me also being able to find a better version of myself and to grow and to be like, yes, Thank gosh, Maddie also found her answers. She's also dealing with a lot that I had to deal with as well. Like I, like I said before, this movie kind of felt like it was made for me, and especially now during this time in my life. This was not a movie I was anticipating. I'm sure that it's going to get lots of negative reviews just based on the filmmaking premises alone. But I, I bonded with the movie. The movie asked me some questions and, you know, the characters, they ask each other some questions. And that is really kind of what makes you love movies, I think, is getting to know the movie and getting to fall in love with it. And just based on some personal opinions, some of the smart writing, some of the other better filmmaking elements, there were some good scenes that were shot in wide that I, I liked that I mentioned before. But yeah, there's, there's really a lot in these movies that go into what makes a viewer fall in love with the film. And so this movie really opened up my eyes to wondering, what is that for me? It's more than just character development, obviously. Rediscovering what I enjoy about movies and the smart writing behind them and the chemistry I have myself with the films. It's been a very interesting year, 2023. This, this is the first year where I've seen a new movie every single week. They've really been starting to open me up personally. And so this movie just kind of really 
took the crack of the egg and just like spilled out the yolk. It's like, I'm discovering something new here. Like something new just woke up within me after seeing this weird raunchy rom-com of all movies to, to do that. This was not what I was expecting. And it really makes me wonder what other movies are out there that I haven't really given a chance because I thought, wow, that looks goofy. That looks stupid. Wow, the writing looks terrible just based on some trailers. Now, don't get me wrong. This movie is not perfect at all. This movie has several, if not many, many flaws. And that has to do a lot with the pacing and even some of like the great writing. It, it, it's, it falters from time to time. But I also do think that works in its favor because this movie is meant to make you feel uncomfortable. It's supposed to put you in an awkward position. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this movie. No hard feelings a lot. But that being said, you guys probably will not have the same experience because this movie, it was just almost like an embodiment of my life from both perspectives, both meeting each other, and then me also taking this year to reflect upon that, and then coming into this movie acts accidentally of all things as well on top of that. It, it almost felt like it was some kind of divine message, some kind of divine intervention, I guess I should say. I also don't think I can recommend this movie because it's so niche to me and some of the acting, even by Jennifer Lawrence uh, and her standards, they didn't really hit the mark. Oh yeah, so I guess I forgot to mention what the movie's about. Whoopsie. So No Hard Feelings is about two characters, both Maddie and Percy. Maddie is uh, basically about to lose her house. She is working a lot of jobs and she's very much struggling, much like a lot of America. And we're all seeing these prices for homes increase and go up and the property taxes going up based on a lot of issues that, you know, we see here in America. And so seeing her deal with that was very much so interesting throughout the film because I could relate. I could relate to her character. I could relate to the action she took. I could relate to how she felt about humanity, essentially, because it does at times feel hopeless. But then she comes to meet Percy through a Craigslist ad of, of all places. And his parents are trying to get him to go out on a date or two and to become a little bit more social. And in return, um, she gets a... Uh, I was going to say a brand new car, but she gets she gets a car, it, it, an A to B kind of car. But regardless, it's her mission to find a car so that she can actually continue to work and get a job and pay off the bills and the taxes so that she can, at the end of the day, keep her house. And meanwhile, Percy is just trying to find himself, become a little bit more social, become not so isolated. He, he's been bullied. He, he, he feels very sheltered. He just honestly doesn't want to experience the world because it is so harsh. And Jennifer Lawrence's character is almost kind of right there. It is very harsh. At the end of the day, he comes to actually experience the world for himself and accept it and move on a path that he himself comes to accept. On IMDb, as of the release date, this movie has a 6.9 out of 10. That's that's not terrible. 64% on Rotten Tomatoes. Could be a little bit better. It could be in the 70s, but uh, it, it feels a little, a little low for me. No Hard Feelings is a nice comedy, courting taboo here and there, but largely rounded with sweetness. It's an amiable time at the movies, but I was hoping for more of a shock. This movie had plenty of shocks to it. I, I don't know what else he wanted. I was almost traumatized by the movie, but uh, he, he did mention um, a courting taboo, uh, and that's to do with the character of Jayla being about 10 to 11 years older than the main character. I actually really enjoyed that. Um, personally speaking, I think it is a great touch point, especially on our society. We see lots of older men date lots of younger women, but we never ever hear about older women dating younger men. And I think that's something that should be more of a norm, something that should be a little bit more accepted. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought about this film. I am very eager to hear what everyone here has to say, whether it's just based off of the trailers alone. If you, maybe you can't go see it, you might be a little bit too young. Um, just if you've seen the trailers or if you care about J-Law or any of the actors in this movie, if you just want to talk about uh, maybe even social anxiety in the comments down below, I am open to listening. Did this movie nail social anxiety? Uh, not exactly. Exactly, but it, it it's a great start. We don't see a lot of that in movies these days, and there's lots of comments on it. And it feels like the director or the producers or someone knows somebody close who has social anxiety 
And they're just asking these questions like, why are you like this? How can I understand this person? And that's personally what I took away from this movie and a lot of other things. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below. I would very much appreciate it. I'm just here to make some fun content and talk about movies and do a little bit of gaming. I also do live streams here on YouTube. I do live streams over on Kick and Twitch, Airing Austin. Be sure to go check those out if you guys want to support a smaller content creator, especially since a lot of content creators these days are actually quitting. Um, I guess that kind of leaves some room for the smaller guys. But guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.